Good morning, everybody. It's Jeff with Eagle Lodge, and I am with some friends here this morning. And hi, hi. <laughs> and this has been a uh, this has been an adventurous week. Always busy on the homestead, and this week is absolutely no exception. Today, uh, I wanted to take just a quick moment to just talk about what's been going on, what's been kind of consuming our thought process here over the last week. And that really is pregnancies on the farm and or the deliveries. So it started with doing uh, the, the, the unfortunate reality of the work of winter mucking out of barns. So it's finally been warm enough. We've been kind of chipping away at a couple different places. But we needed to make sure that our Nubian goats and our Icelandic sheep were both clearly mucked out, cleaned, sanitized as much as possible because both sets of those animals are set to deliver very, very soon. Our Nubian goats, who are presently entertained, uh, they, uh, our first one is actually due on Sunday. We, we, with our Nubians, we expose them to our bucks in, we'll call it, specific time so in other words when we're seeing that they're in heat we expose them and then we move them so they're not together on a regular basis so we're able to time the the, the pregnancy the gestation and ultimately the delivery reasonably well so our first delivery is technically a due date of sunday here this upcoming sunday our icelandic sheep were exposed to a ram a little bit later so they'll come here in the coming weeks but we do it a little bit differently with them we just let the ram run with them for two months and so the timing for them is totally random we have absolutely no idea which becomes a long stretch of time in terms of babysitting and watching utter development and uh you know midnight checks four in the morning checks all these different things to see when lambs will drop and whether or not we need to intervene with deliveries which has been uh a reality uh for each of us or i should say for each year i want to say i don't think we've ever had a season where we have not had to intervene on hi on some level or another whether it was just for one or several we've gotten a lot better the first year was certainly i don't say scary but of course you're always apprehensive you don't know exactly what's going to come you don't know exactly what to do what to feel what to look for and the uh the woman who who sold us our our uh our, our icelandic sheep she she was she was wonderful she was a great mentor for us to get going and she, she gave us the, the reality that in that very first year, we, we encountered just about every conceivable problem and dilemma that we could come in with. So if we, got, if we come into any sort of delivery situations that require assistance, I'm going to do my best to get involved with at least a camera to see if we can provide some education on that because we've, we've got a few years under our belt of helping assist along the way. But we've got three Nubians that are pregnant. Uh, we got number one here. Hi there, sweetie. Number two, the big one. That's Martha. Uh, and then, and then Justice. Justice is on the other side of the feeder. And then these are all the yearlings from a year ago. We we make a conscious choice to let our whether it's our our goats or our sheep grow and mature and breed them in year two. It's a uh, it's a debatable topic. Lots of people think that it, it's fine. Um, we just make a choice to, to give them the opportunity to grow, mature, become optimally healthy, maybe not healthy, uh, fully developed anyway, uh, so they can hopefully become better mothers, um, just more natural to, to the situation. So at any rate, so that's the exciting thing for them. But then we also had the vet out this week. We had, uh, we had them come out to evaluate our Highland cattle, to do pregnancy checks for them. We have uh, we we purchased a bull last fall, Hal, and Hal is awesome. We love Hal. Uh, we call him Ferdinand a little bit because uh, Corbin is so so enthralled with that uh, that particular movie. Oh, yes. Corbin, Corbin, Corbin! Look at Corbin's face. Oh, I have my own Ferdinand. Do you get Ferdinand? Did mommy and daddy get you a Ferdinand? One of 
but uh, Hal has been with us for a couple months, and we've we've had these these heifers exposed to him for several months. And we got some mixed results, quite honestly, from the vet. Uh, so Abby, our most mature uh, cow who's delivered a couple times here on the property, she's pregnant, she's well along, everything looks great with her. Uh, two other cows, Dorothy, was not pregnant. Uh, we were very, very high, disappointed because she's she's a beautiful cow. She's, uh, I mean, she we've taken her to shows. She's she's done well, uh, but she's not pregnant. And this is now the second time that she's been exposed to a bull and not been pregnant. And so we're kind of faced with some challenges of what to do potentially with her. We're not making any rash choices. We're going to continue to keep her exposed to this uh, to this bull. But um, I don't know. Uh, we may find ourselves in a in a difficult dilemma of not just having a pet. Uh, if she's not going to produce calves, then then she becomes. I'll say her destiny in life becomes altered and we hope that's not going to be the case so we'll see what we can do emma our white highland is kind of in the same boat you know the the vet the vet said that she could feel uh ovary movement activity i think is the best way she described it and but not an obvious pregnancy thing so we'll have to wait and see on that and then we had another uh cow that we couldn't get in a halter. There was a lot of commotion. Um, you know, cows going in and out, and you know, new person on the farm, and so it just it wasn't safe to try to get the the fourth one up for a pregnancy check. So hopefully she's pregnant, um, but we'll see. Um, it's been it's been a little sobering, I guess, to kind of see that because we were so excited to be able to grow our herd with our with our expanded. Uh, uh, expanded property uh, down the road that we're going to be able to graze the animals on so we we really just wanted to be able to take this opportunity and grow which we've been unable to do with our limitations that we have on our property so we'll see uh the jury's still out but it was not it was not the exciting news that we were hoping we were going to get uh what we did get from an exciting news with the vet here though is that she did come out and she helped me take a look at our pig that had the uh, the bumps on on his neck and it turned out to be great news it was just an abscess you know she was able to uh, to put a syringe in draw it out see exactly what it was so we cut it open drained it out uh you know flushed it out and did all those things and so perfectly healthy little pig he should be fine no ancestors or butt so that was definitely a positive news no no serious disease no serious issues to speak of so that was a gigantic blessing and uh, makes us all feel a whole lot better about what's going on there. So I wanted to give you a quick update on things. I probably won't get a chance to do anything else until deliveries come because we got some friends coming into town. So we're going to spend a lot of time with them. And uh, so, but it will, <laughs> inevitably, we're going to have some kids on the ground. And by kids, I don't mean the human variety. And so it'll be exciting to see in the coming days and or weeks through all the activity that's coming up and anybody who has a homestead heck even if you don't you know baby goats and baby baby sheep are always fun to watch uh, and, and be entertained by so so we'll keep you guys posted you guys have a blessed day